Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of My Podcast is Breakfast Included. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> Great. Anyway, today on the show, I sit down with Kalindo Parker. Kalindo is a guitar player, solo artist, who moonlights as the guitar player and collaborator for Janelle Monet. But that's not what we talked about. Well, we did talk about that a little bit. We talked about how he got started playing guitar who his first guitar hero was, his famous uncle, who gave him some of the best advice he's ever had, jamming with Prince, amongst other things. It was a great conversation. We met at Dallas's legendary Three Links. So you hear some background noise, some people talking, but it gave it a little bit of vibe. Anyway, I hope you dig it. Let's check it out. Tell me who you are. (laughs) Yes. I am Kalindo Parker, lead guitarist for Janelle Monet, also co-songwriter for Janelle Monet, and I have my own band where I rock out with an awesome trio, and I'm glad to be here in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> right on, man. Thanks a lot. Uh, well, let's get first things out of the way, man. When did you start playing? Well, I started playing guitar when I was eight years old. Yeah. Taught myself how to play. It wasn't easy, you know. Yeah. I started out playing um, Smoke on the Water on the E string, on the low E string. <laughs> and once I knew I could do that, I was ready to rock and roll. Yeah, nothing was going to stop you. Right? <laughs> That's right. Uh, you um, you have a uh, somewhat famous uncle. Oh, yeah. Maceo Parker. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. How was it like that? Did you, did you have a relationship with him? Or yes, was he I just, do. Uh... It's, it's funny. He and I don't usually talk on the phone very often, but today we spoke for about a half an hour on the phone. Oh, I know. So, yeah, we are, we are close. Um, we kind of, um, I feel like we have telepathy. You know, we kind of like vibe, vibe each other out yeah. from a distance. But um, When you're yeah. thinking about each other, one will call yeah. the other. <laughs> well, usually I'm the one that calls. Yeah. Um, but he's, he called me last week right before I went on stage for a show so um you know he's on my on my radar especially being uh you know an uncle of mine you know i just i just lost my uncle melvin who also uh played with james, james brown. brown yeah, yeah. He's a drummer right? the drummer yes yeah. yeah. and he's younger than maceo so i'm uh staying real close to my family now more than more than i used to right on right yeah. on and uh having having somebody who played with one of the greats what uh what kind of what kind of advice did maceo give you <laughs> oh that's a that's a good question uh, wow. Well, you know, he he did say, you know, whatever you do, you can easily be distracted by all the excitement going on, but keep your axe with you at all times. And as 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 you know, light as that might seem as advice, uh, it's such a it's such good advice because there are times there are times when I would do a show. I remember we did a show for uh, Stella McCartney, and. Um, my, I brought my Gibson ES355, very valuable guitar, but very fragile guitar. Yeah. So I left it in one of the bedrooms in the townhouse that we were in. And by the time it was time for us to leave to go home and for me to retrieve my guitar, that bedroom was closed off and locked. Like everything was locked up. So I had to figure it out. <laughs> Put it that way. Right on. Yeah. Right on. Uh, who were your earliest guitar heroes? Well, the first one was Ace Frehley of Kiss. Right on. You know, as soon as I saw him on there on that stage with with the hair and the and the makeup, I was I was sold on being a lead guitarist. And then I discovered Jimi Hendrix yeah. at around 13 years old, and uh, Alex Lifeson from Rush, Brian May from Queen. Yeah. So those are my first guitar right. inspirations. A friend of mine refers to Kiss as the Gateway Band. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they are literally the Gateway Band. Yeah. Yeah, so, they opened the door to, you know, people like Hendrix and Jimmy Page, yeah. you know. And so by 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 Ace being your first uh, guitar hero, was it a Les Paul right off the bat? or uh, That was what I wanted, but they were a lot more expensive than Strats. So yeah. I did get a Strat. I love Strats as well because Jimmy Hendrix played it. And a lot of people back in that era played, played the Strat, you know, so... Um, you know, I love the Strat. I remember my first Strat, I wish I kept, I sold it, but it's a beautiful, deep yellow Strat. It's got that, like, darker yellow. Yeah. That's very rare. Like a, yeah, like, when a yellow gets older and yes, it starts, yes. like, the smoke will get to it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And were you, uh, growing up, were you in different bands? Were you in rock bands, or, or was it a first... Were you into the rock scene, I uh, guess, in the, the beginning? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember at, uh, at 13, I started a band, a rock band, uh, it was four of us. We, we called it the Mix in my XX. 
and it was like two black guys and two white guys. <laughs> we thought it was a big deal. We're like, wow, black and white people are playing the same band together. This is a big deal. This right. is, you know, this is right. deep. Um, uh, the singer actually unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago, um, Gerard Duray. Great singer. He also uh, he, he's also a great hairstylist. I remember as a kid, he said to me, "I'm either going to make it as a rock star or a hairstylist." <laughs> and he actually ended up owning his own saloon. And I saw him on TV doing interviews and stuff. Yeah. So he made it. Yeah, I know a couple of my friends coming up were were uh, hairstylists as well, and they kind of took that route. Yeah, man. And I mean, more secure money, I guess. Yes. <laughs> During the pandemic, I reconsidered what, what my choices were. <laughs> Right. Uh, man, were you a session guy before you started with Janelle? No, I was really a Janelle session guy. I mean, if anything, I, I was in the studio with her exclusively for the most part. Um, and, of course, on tours and doing shows and stuff. But um, we really crafted our um, our showmanship at, at the studio at home, you know, yeah. at the home studio in the rehearsal room. Uh, watching great artists perform as well, yeah. um, which is something that I, as a, you know, as a, as a fan of rock and roll, I mean, I think I saw James Brown like ten times easily because he used to play the Roadhouse Cafe in New York, at the Lone Star Cafe, so yeah. the original name, and so they would sneak me in, you know, as a kid, and I, I would watch that, and of course I've seen pretty much everybody, yeah, from that from that era. What, what did you take away from just watching Ooh. James Brown, like? Well, I mean, just hard working on stage. He, he went up there and put on a show. He cooked it. Yeah. Uh, and I remember the show started off with the band doing an intro um, of uh, Entertainment Tonight theme song, which was so funky but funny at the same time. Because yeah. yeah. it's like, it's a corny song, but yeah. it, they made it so funky. And then they introduced Maceo, and then Maceo does a song with the band. And then James Brown comes out. So the intro, the setup, the reveal uh, was what really sold me on that show. Right on. Yeah. Right on. And do you put any of that, what you learned, into your show? I do. I try to. You know, it's usually the budget gets in the way, um, but I try to be creative with what budget I have right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you come up with the best ideas. That's right. That's true. Did, did, yeah. I, there's a quote for it. I can't remember it. I'll make, I'll make a fool of myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to me when you get it, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. Um, d- let's get back into Janelle. Uh, you said you were like uh, a studio guy with her. Did you meet her in the studio? Did you meet her before she got her deal? Or I met her before the deal. Um, and at the same time, I kind of met her in the studio because uh, it was a home studio that, that uh, we all yeah. had, Wonderland Studios. And it's still there. It still exists and stuff. Um, but I met her. She was, she was working on... Um, something a project for of her, of her own on her own, um, and I was there really to work with Deep Cotton, who are the producers for Janelle Monae, okay. uh, Chuck, Lightning, and Nate Wonder. So I was working on their their music, and then I started working on Janelle's uh, Metropolis. Yeah, you know, helping her finish that, yeah. and, um, and then uh, we were shopping it to get a record deal at first. And nobody was buying. Everybody, I don't know it's, if it's being black playing alternative music or something, you know, with, with guitars or whatever. But um, it, it wasn't really being accepted the way that we thought it would be. But yeah. so we decided to put it out ourselves. And then the next day, P Diddy calls and says, "Hey, I want to I want to promote you guys. I want to support you guys." Yeah. So, so I met you right around that time. Right. Uh, you guys were. At the time, it's not a, a bad term. You guys were the baby band on an Erica Badu tour, yes. where I was with the band uh, NERD. I was working for them, and I remember, like you guys had your stage set up. It was a very budgeted stage set up with the banner, but man, it was just real edgy, and yes. didn't fit the bill. <laughs> And it was right. just, it was so cool, you yes. know. I, I can't you, remember man. your drummer's name, but he wore the... Mike. The, yeah. Mike Phillips. Yeah. Yes. But it was just a great band, which is when we met. And um, what do you think from then to, like, where you guys are now? Like, what... That's, that's quite a trajectory. And, and, I mean, people say in a short time, but that's a, that was... It's really a short time in, in the music world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And now Janelle's acting... Amazing, yeah. yeah. Amazing. I mean, um, she's living the, the dream. That's really the dream to go from um, playing tiny little clubs uh, like Apache Cafe in Atlanta, yeah, and then working our way up to Smith's Old Bar, which we love. That was my favorite club. 
at this, even to today, I would say that's in my top ten favorite clubs to play yeah. in the U.S. Uh, and now, you know, we've played Madison Square Garden a couple of times. I mean, it's incredible. And then I love going to see her in movies because yeah. um, I've always had a dream as well to be an actor. And so to see her actually acting, I put myself in her place. I'm like, wow. Can you imagine the, the ability to react? Because acting is about reacting yeah. in a natural kind of way, yeah. not sounding, you know, stiff. <laughs> not sounding like a robot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, well, let me see over here. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if you know this, I, the band that I work for, she guest starred on a, on a track on their last album. Yes. And we did a, uh, an episode of Ellen with her. And yes. I had to go up and say, hey, do you remember me? <laughs> I'm glad you did that, and and yeah. I, by the way, I love that track. Oh right my on, goodness, man. Right yeah, on. that's a pretty cool track. Huge fan, man. Yeah. Duran Duran, they were also a big influence for me as a kid. You know, yeah. really funky. I met John Taylor at an event that I did with Nile Rogers a while okay. back. Yeah, such a nice guy. Yeah, 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 man. Let's we we gotta do something together, man. <laughs> We do, right? We yeah. do. Uh, what kind of gear are you using right now, man? What's your favorite guitar? Ooh, that's tough. What's the one that you just pick up every day? Oh, that's that's so tough because um, of late I've been purchasing guitars uh, a lot recently um, to make up for some theft that I experienced, which was pretty bad. But uh, I would say uh, up until about a week ago, I've been playing my my Brian May Super, okay. which is a very special guitar. I've been on a two-year waiting list to get. Um, and then uh, the other day I picked up a 1964 Sheraton reissue. So 1964 reissue. Yeah. It's very important to emphasize the reissue because yeah. the real 1964 is $30,000. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, this yeah. one was a little bit less. Uh, that one I'm loving. It's got um, mini humbuckers. It's got a more of a bluesy kind of sound to it, but it really thrashes on the rock as well. Yeah. So right now I'm playing that one. So when I play Amplified Live on Saturday, uh, here in, in Dallas, I will be playing that guitar most likely. Yeah, right yeah. on. What brought you to Dallas? Man, uh, the vibe, you know, yeah. uh, the people, the food, the, the way of life, the quality of life. Yeah. Um, you guys are wide open, so, you know, it's, I've already played, I don't know, a dozen shows already this year. Right on, man. Yeah, right man. Right on. Yeah. Do you dig it, though? You dig it? I love it. I right love on. it. And I got to say this. I love my Fender Strats. I, I do love Fender Stratocaster, and I play those all the time as well. Uh-huh. My favorite guitar is of mine. I have a '61 uh, reissue SG. Oh, it's a 2000. Sick. And it's the one I pick up the most. It's the the cheapest one I paid for. Wow. But it, that's then that it like the one that you don't expect to be the favorite, and then that's yes. yeah, and it's all stock. Wow. Not that you asked me, but yeah, I just yeah, thought yeah. I had well, to do that. Yeah, good yeah, to know. 61 reissue. Yeah. yeah. And what amp do you play live? Yeah, I, so up until a week ago, I've been playing the uh, Vox AC10s. So mm-hmm. I've got these two very cute little AC10s. I've got Sweet Tone. They're amazing amps. But I uh, went to Guitar Center the other day and saw a Marshall Plexi Combo. I didn't even know they made those. Oh, okay. So it's literally the Plexi, but in a combo. Right you know, on. 10 to 10 watts and 20 watts, or 20 watts and 40 watts, I think. Yeah, 20 and 40. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That thing sounds like my old Plexi I used to have back in the day that's way too loud for my apartment <laughs> or the stage. Um, so I bought that thing, and I'm playing it now all the time. Right on. Yeah. Right on, man. Yeah. Um, back to your uh, your live performances, man. Since you've been, since you and the band with Janelle, you guys have played with pretty much everyone uh stevie wonder mm-hmm. now rogers yeah but one person stands out above all you got to play with uh, prince really took janelle under his wing yeah you know? what a blessing and uh that he used to ask you to jam with him all the time yeah what was that like it was always do you ever have a Captain Kirk moment where he borrowed your guitar? Yes. And threw it in the air? <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> and land, let it land. He pretended to throw it. I remember, so, okay. It's, you know, it's everything you would imagine it being when you're around someone who you admire and yeah. idolize and everything. Um, so, but yeah, I do remember one time we did a show in, I want to say, Chicago. Um, and um, he, before the show, he asked me to, if he could borrow the guitar to play his guitar solo on Let's Get Crazy, Let's Go yeah. Crazy. And uh, I was just like, wow. 
Prince is asking me permission <laughs> to play his solo yeah. on his song. So I, I was just, yes, sir, of course, are you kidding me? Um, and he said, now, I want to make sure my tone is is, is thick and, uh, you know, rock. I don't want it to sound like B.B. King, no offense to B.B. King, but, you know, not to be too clean. He wants it to be distorted like my tone gets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, he said, I will throw your guitar into the crowd, and it's probably going to break. <laughs> at least he told you. Yeah, at least he told me. Yeah. So at the end, when he played his solo, when he finished his solo, he took the guitar, and if you see the video footage, you see him throwing it, like fake throwing it into the crowd, and then he's like, nah, he gives it back to me very gently. Yeah. So, great guy, amazing guy to be around. He ever give you any good advice? Mm, or was it always just like hanging no. out with yeah, him? Yeah, it was always hanging out and jamming. I would love to have gotten some advice from him. Yeah. Um, I think just being around such a legend, um, the, I, our time was limited, obviously, and uh, I didn't get to the point of letting him know that I'm also an artist and, you know, do you have any advice for me? You know, yeah. I would love to have had that chance to ask him, and I, I'm sure I had the chance, I just didn't yeah. take it. You know, I, I always uh, thought of myself as someone who supports the person I'm with, Janelle Monae. Yeah. And so I wasn't thinking along those lines. Mm -hmm. But now looking back, it's like, uh, excuse me, I have a question, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you ever get to jam with him, like sit down and jam? Oh, yes, a lot. We jammed at his house quite a bit before we even toured with him. So yeah. I got to do that a lot. And uh, my first jam with him ever on stage was at Madison Square Garden. What was that like? <laughs> Incredible. We had opened for him, and um, and then afterwards, I'm chilling, watching a show, and he, he he's like leaves his band to come to me to ask me to jam with him on the song they were playing, which I was, for one, I didn't really want to do that because I was in, in watching mode, but at the yeah. same time, I was honored and thankful. So yeah. I said, of course, absolutely. So I Are got you up intimidated? There. Very intimidated. <laughs> He asked me if I knew the song first, and I was like, no. And he's like, come on. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And it actually worked out. It was great. So there's there's a lesson. I guess he did teach me something. Yeah. You know, face your fear. Yeah. Enjoy it. Conquer it. Yeah. It's jam. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a dumb follow-up question compared to what you just told me. What's the what's the standout moment, man, in your career? <laughs> I see why I said, said that. Um, it's not, actually, it's not a dumb question. It's a great question because I, I, I want to say, I don't know. It's tough because it, it's, yeah, it's between that, but it also the first time I met Prince was very standout because yeah. I met him at his house in Beverly Hills and just... You know, it was such a Willy Wonka vibe to me, you know, just, you know, the, the gate, <laughs> yeah. all the security guards, right. all dressed in black, and the, the house was, was like marble, had a very uh, Italian vibe to it, like yeah. in Italy, Italian, you know, um, and we remember walking down these beautiful stairs, marble stairs, yeah. and uh, the, the security guards led us to the room, I guess it was a living room that he was rehearsing with his band in, yeah. and they stopped playing as they saw us arriving. I feel like I was either in the front of the line or, or right behind the security guard or something. or Because um, I remember seeing him with his cane. I was just like, whoa, Prince has a cane. <laughs> this is crazy. You know, he's older, obviously, you know, from when I remember seeing him on TV and stuff. Um, but he had just had surgery, so he was limping around with yeah. the cane. But uh, it was so remarkable seeing him in person. Right on. Right on. Yeah. And what, what do you have going on right now, man? That's what I wanted to That's talk to you about. That's a great question. Really. Yeah, we just yeah. kind of got through everything yeah, else. Thanks for reminding quick. me. I do have some things going on. Um, well, I'm really excited. I shot a music video in London. Mm -hmm. And this is a seven hundred dollars or $800,000 music video, some crazy expensive, um, that we shot. Um, and I'm really, really excited that it will be released this year very soon. We don't have an official date yet. I think I know the date that we're aiming for, but yeah. it's going to take some some, uh, some, some more energy to make that date come yeah. true. But uh, you got to look out for it. It's called Sugar. And uh, the Sugar Music video produced by Mark Maxwell and Nanja. Uh, who's dead, Lot dead Lotus Culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know her. Yeah, man. So I'm really, really excited. It's very, very sleek and uh, mysterious. Right on. Is this part of your solo thing? Yes. Though? Right on? Yes, yes, yes. And you just released an EP in 20... 21? Actually, it didn't come out. It didn't? I, okay. No, I, I pressed pause on it, you know, and it's something that I, I do too often, I think, as a Virgo, I, I judge myself a little bit too much, yeah. and um, so yeah. I will be releasing something, so I'll let what you know What was the reason that. you put you put it? You know, it's one of those things where... Pause button. Like, yeah, it's, it's just kind of like, ah, is this good enough? And, you know, I produced it myself, and it, it sounds good, but I feel like when you produce your own stuff, unless you're Prince, 
uh, it, you might overlook some things, you know. So I decided to have another producer produce it. So okay. I, I got Paul Q. Q. Coldery, the producer for. Um, Whole, live through this. Okay, Radiohead, yeah, 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 yeah. A whole bunch of people. So I had him do it, and he did a remarkable job. So it's done. Now we're just we're just shopping it to the right label that can put the money behind it to get it mm. get it out there. And it's not it's not cost that much money. <laughs> you know, it's just it's just promotions and stuff like yeah, that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find yourself second guessing a lot? Absolutely. I think way too hard. An overthinker. An overthinker, big time. Right on. Yeah, it's like, hmm, what, I don't know. Should I get the fries? Should I get the, the hot dog? Should I get the, oh, maybe a hamburger, double burger? Uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I am a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Goldblum moment. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was about to say. Um, man, uh, we just had the holidays, and uh, how was your New Year? Great? Yes, thanks for asking. New Year's was really great. I felt... For one, happy to have survived 2021, and yeah. uh, I feel that 2022 is going to be the year where, uh, you know, the other part of my dreams come true. Yeah. You know, so I'm excited about that. How about you? How was your how was It was your good, year? man. It was good. Good. <laughs> how was your other holiday? How was Christmas? Oh, Christmas is great. What's yeah. the best gift anyone's ever given you? Oh. So, like, materialistic speaking? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got I better get the right one now. <laughs> I don't want to say the wrong thing. Let's see the best gift I've ever gotten. Gosh. Well, I guess when my dad bought me a bike for Christmas a long time ago. That was pretty special. That was it. Yeah. Was your dad a musician too? Yes, he was. He was he was he was first his first thing was being a professor of law. He was the first black law professor at Columbia University. Oh wow. Which is amazing. Uh, he tried to get in as a student. They wouldn't let him in because he was black. And then they offered him a job many years later. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, that's, that's incredible. so great. He's yeah. the rock star, you know. Yeah. And uh, he got me a bike when I was, I don't know, five or something like that. Yeah. So I learned how to ride a bike. And that's enabled me to ride a bike today. So I think that's the greatest gift I've ever gotten. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Um, did he encourage your music career? He did, believe it or not. Even though he was a lawyer, he did. He, he's, he was the guy who wanted his kids to be happy doing whatever they do best. So he said, stay in your lane, do what you do well, and just you know, make the most out of it. And um, he also reminded me to show that I'm a piano player too, and play piano on stage. I haven't done that yet, but yeah. I'm going to do that. I'll, I'm just you know, figuring out how to incorporate logistically how to get the piano on the stage or the keyboard or whatever. Yeah. Uh, he said, make sure you show your voice too. Right on, man. Yeah, man. And your current band, it's a trio. Yes. I saw you guys a few weeks ago in December, and your drummer's amazing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yes, he is. Not he, to say that the rest of you, you the other two guys, aren't that good, but <laughs> the, you. your drummer just, I just heard him up there sound checking. I was yes. like, oh my God. Yes, Joshua Sloan. Yeah, he's amazing. Uh, Patrick Smith on bass. Yeah, Joshua, at that time when you saw us, he was not 21 yet. So the fact uh. that he's <laughs> amazing at, at 20 is, is a, it's right just a, you know. And how did you meet these guys? Um, I met them through my friend Justin. Um, he lives here in Dallas. He's a Lions, Justin Lyons. He's a great guitar player. He's always on tour with people. He just got off tour with Machine Gun Kelly. And I, I texted him. I said, hey, dude, I just moved into town. Help. <laughs> I need to figure some things out. Like, who can I work with? What, you know, the only rock players. Um, you know, I need work. You know, let's go. What's going on? And he's hooked me up with, uh, with Patrick on bass. And Patrick hooked me up with... Joshua, since they play together all the time. There's nothing like a bass player and a drummer that have that uh, relationship. You know yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They can feel, it. you know, they're there. They're right in the pocket. Exactly. Yeah, that rhythm section is the most important thing, man. Yes. Yeah. Especially when that's all you have. <laughs> <laughs> what can we expect from Kalindo in 2022? Yeah. Well, this EP coming out, the music video, yeah. as well, and um, I've got enough music now to release really an album and a half yeah so you know we'll see what happens any shows other than the amplified live coming out not as of yet so know. maybe we'll be here again at three links uh, or or somewhere else here in dallas yeah i think i told you about my buddy that i'd like to oh, i'd like right. to connect you yes, with and maybe let's, let's i think totally you guys would make a great bill together come on now <laughs> bring it on <laughs> anyway man my my podcast is called is breakfast included I love it. If breakfast was included, what would you have? I love it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Ooh, food. Let's see. I'm going to go with... Oh. 
I forget the name of the place I went to, but I had this amazing shrimp and grits for breakfast. It was so good. So, I mean, even though I love all kinds of things for breakfast, I'm going to go with that right now. Shrimp and grits. Shrimp and grits. With a side of cornbread. Right on, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right well, where can people find you online on social media? Yeah, follow me on Instagram at The Real Kalindo. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Kalindo Parker. Twitter, Kalindo. You know, go to my YouTube page, Kalindo Parker, YouTube, and, and follow me. Subscribe to that, please, and watch all the fun stuff I'm doing. I'm also on TikTok. So look, yeah. look under Kalindo. Yeah, yeah man. Innovative videos. You do videos. a lot of funny dances oh, on there? Well, I'm working on that. I, mean, I do that. In, I'm a little I'm private with that still. I should show off my funny dancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. It makes people millions. You know what? Funny dancing. On that note, first thing tomorrow. <laughs> right on. Well, man, I do appreciate you taking time. I know it took us a while to connect. Thank you, brother. But I appreciate you doing this, man. Thank you very much right. for having me. Thanks a lot. All the best to you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Kalindo Parker. You can find him on social media at the real Kalindo on Instagram, Kalindo on Facebook. Just Google his name, Kalindo. He's got a lot of great stuff coming up. The video he talked about, the EP that he re-recorded, it's coming out later this year. Check out what he has on all the streaming platforms. The guy's super talented. Anyway, all right, guys, I'm done. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you next week. <laughs> <laughs>